Hi, my name is Jacqueline Tankersley, and this is my 335 clinical reflection presentation. So I'm going to discuss the eight objectives um, that were obtained during this clinical experience. So the first objective is utilize previous knowledge of the science, liberal arts, informational technologies, and nursing to develop skills as a nurse leader. So this was accomplished during 311 Skills recording when I, you know, I, I assist with the students doing their full head-to-toe assessment. Also during 309 when I was with Professor, Professor Criso and um, her students, when there was a student who who wanted me to show him how to do a full head to toe assessment on his patient because he actually has never done it on his own. So I showed him, I demonstrated, I used all the skills I learned during my previous um, classes and I was able to show him how to do a full head to toe assessment. I actually had um, watched him to do, um, do another full head to toe assessment on another patient. Um, it was very, I remember Last year, I wasn't able to do a full head-to-toe assessment, so it was really nice to be able to teach somebody. Also, um, during 311 with Professor Watson, I was able to assist with showing um, the students how to do a abdominal assessment. I also gave them tips and hints on how to um, take tests and what to expect when they become seniors. So for the second objective, apply basic principles of management to meet the challenge of an ever-changing healthcare environment. So this was accomplished when I was following the nurse supervisor at Lehigh Valley at Muhlenberg. I was with Jen. She, um, she was a nurse supervisor. So basically, she would um, send nurses. Um, she was in charge of their schedule. So she would send them to floors that may need help. So she was very smart. She um, had more of a transformational leadership style. She really focused on the relationship between her and the other nurses. Very helpful when um, if there was a patient in need or a nurse in need, she would jump right in to help out. Um, so, so with the ever-changing healthcare um, environment, if a floor was short staff, she will take a, a nurse who who may have not been needed on this particular floor and send them to um, a floor that may need the extra help. She was in charge with the ones one make sure all the nurses have um, get their breaks. And also, um, I followed a nurse practitioner, Daryl um, Davison. She was the manager at the Central Staffing Resources at St. Luke's. So basically, she was in charge of a float pool and um, so if there was a floor that was short staffed, she will send a nurse to help out just to make sure to, to have um, continued care and um, help out on the floor. So the third objective is demonstrate leadership skills through effective use of communication by representing self, the college, and nursing in a professional manner. I accomplished this um, with each clinical site we would have to um, communicate via email. I would email the nurse leaders. I will introduce myself, explain the reason I was contacting them. We will coordinate um, a mutual time to meet. And also once the experience was complete, I would send a thank you note, um, you know, thanking for allowing me to shadow them. Also, um, I, I, you really do need to have good communication skills when when you are doing your leadership clinicals. Also with um, Erin from the Lehigh County Humane Society, she we communicated through the email and there was times where she would email me and would ask if I could come in an hour early to help with the cats, with feeding them. So I would agree and, and she, she was very nice. So the fourth objective is to critically evaluate and disseminate current research related to the principles of leadership and the effects on the healthcare system. So I did find an article that I was going to present during our um, final conference, the relationship between nurse leadership and patient outcomes, a systemic review update. So basically this um, article has a conceptual framework 
which consists of the of a structure process and patient outcomes. For the structure, it's about the leadership styles, if it's uh, transformational, transformal, or, or et cetera. Then there's um, the process section is about the leadership process, about open communications, the staff, safety outcomes, promoting positive relationships. And the, the last uh, framework is patient outcomes, which can be mortality, adverse um, events and satisfaction. So basically the result is that leadership significantly uh, significantly is, is associated with patients, mortality, medical errors, and adverse um, events. So effective nurse leadership ensure appropriate staffing and resources, thus it optimizes um, patient's outcome. So five, function as a competent patient advocate, nurse advocate, change agent. So I accomplished this objective when I was at um, Country Meadows. It's a nursing rehab center. So when I was with a nurse, her, her name was also Jen, we went into a, a client's room. The son was upset because his father hasn't eaten anything or drinking anything all day. So we did an assessment and um, the patient had sores in his mouth. So we did some um, dental hygiene. We, we um, was able to remove gunk from his mouth, which he still wasn't able to really talk. It was very painful for him to, for him to open his mouth. Um, he wasn't really verbal, so we asked him, like, are you thirsty? Did you want something to drink? And he did shake his head yes. So we he wasn't able to drink from a straw. It was just too painful. So we, we found a spoon. It did take a while to give him some water, but he was very grateful because he was extremely thirsty. So um, it probably took us 30 minutes because we had to slowly give him something to drink. So if we didn't like advocate for a patient, then we don't know what could have happened. He may may have went the whole day without drinking with before somebody figured out that he was just in a lot of pain and he wasn't able to verbalize what was going on with him. So six, formulate plans for continued personal leadership, growth, and development as an independent practitioner of nursing and contributing member of society. So I um, actually signed up for an SNA Dine and Discuss Tipping the Pain Scale film, which was being shown at this um, civic um, little theater. So basically, this film was about addiction um, crisis in America and how, you know, the healthcare system may have um, failed these patients battling addiction. And it also um, presented um, ways how, uh, or it showed people, uh, people's journey with battling addictions and then also how ordinary ordinary people stepped up um and they helped you know an event like innovative treatment options for these patients if it could if it was simply you know providing what they did they provided um clean needles or giving free haircuts to these addicts Addicts and and it was really very inspirational and it was a beautiful film and also it discussed how um, politics like they are um, um, how the government stepped in and they passed laws to help um, addicts overcome this unfortunate um, illness recognize the roles of the nurse in policy making related to healthcare services at state local state national and global levels. So um, again, when I was with the advanced practice nurse, Daryl, she again was the manager at the central um, staffing resource. Um, I assist in writing a policy that was going to go out to all of St. Luke's. Um, the policy was on, um, was on virtual one-to-ones. So like a virtual sitter I think they were going to change the, the name of sitter. They didn't really agree with it. So, so basically, um, we were, there was a lot of editing, um, uh, correcting the grammar. Um, we had to come up with criteria for the patients to meet in order to have the vir virtual sitter. So that was very interesting. Um, seeing how the policies are made, it was time sensitive because they really wanted this policy out like as soon as possible. And last we have, um, 
the final objective, predict and describe potential ethical dilemmas within clinical organization and professional nursing practice. So when I was at Lehigh Valley Muhlenberg, I was with Jen. Um, she was a nurse supervisor. So she, we we went to behavioral health. We went to the emergency department and patient rehab. And then we finally made it to um, ICU where there was a patient who was being intubated. Um, this was the first time I was able to watch. I was able to go into room with my PPE and, um, you know, watch this happen. But I did notice there was a lot of tension in the room, especially with the nurses, which I didn't really understand happened until after the patient was intubated. And to come fi to find out um, the patient when she was um, awake and coherent, she mentioned that she did not want to be intubated. This is not what she wanted. Um... And then um, according to ANA um, Code of Ethics, you know, patients have the more or legal right to determine what will be done with their own person. But once um, she became unconscious, her son was able to make decisions on, um, on her treatment. So once he was, so he decided that um, she was, once she had a trouble breathing, he wanted her to get intubated which um, the nurse didn't agree with because the patient expressed her um, that she did not want this to, ha to, to happen, but the doctors allowed it. The, um, so there was a lot of tension in the room. And so then it, and then it, it just reminds you of paternalism, the act of protecting the entrance of the person. So um, being in the nurse's shoes, I'm not sure what I could have done differently that the nurses in the situation were in. It's a very tough, tough situation and, um, and yeah. So that concludes this presentation. Thank you.